Welcome to Fog. Looking over here, you're going to see one of the first offerings of our UltraZone technology. This is the next step in Fog's continuous improvement process to move the customer closer to a septic. A big advantage into this system is the fact that the chemistry used to sanitize and sterilize the bottles comes from the atmosphere itself. The only chemicals bought for this system are to clean the product contact area and the filling area of the filler. Over the next couple years, we'll work on developing solutions for those as well. Our goal isn't to necessarily cut out the chemical supplier, but our goal is to help you, the customer, be more profitable. How can we gain a competitive edge in this complex filling environment today? We found that the ownership cost of machines that are near a septic in performance is quite high. And anything we can do to keep that ownership cost more competitive brings opportunity to us as a company. We'll go down to the shop floor and we'll walk through this machine front to back. But what you're looking at here is the support equipment to manage the atmosphere. So the chemistry used to sterilize your bottle is a hydrogen peroxide-like chemistry that's extracted from water vapor and the air itself. So we don't want to um, take this chemistry for granted. The sterilization area is still extremely aggressive as if it was a purchased hydrogen peroxide environment. All right, welcome to the infeed of the machine. Now we make these machines scaled down into as low as 10 bottles a minute and scaled up is to as much as potentially a thousand bottles a minute. This particular he machine here runs from about 100 to 250 bottles a minute depending on the package. The first step here is to manage the atmosphere. So the atmosphere in the sterilization chamber is intensely aggressive. We don't want that to leak into the plant environment. There's technology monitoring the inside and outside concentrations to keep them within the OSHA limits. This is a overpressure barrier zone. So this is positively pressured HEPA air pumped into here. This pressure is higher than this environment to always keep the HEPA air flowing in and also higher than the outside environment, always keeping the HEPA air flowing out and so that no contamination can pass into the sterilization zone. As we get into the sterilization process, it's a multi-step process. So the first thing, we're gonna start pre-treating the bottle. We're gonna dose the exterior of the package and start to dose the interior. We're gonna aggressively dose the interior of the package. The package will then go up on a rotary turret where it will continue to sanitize or sterilize the inner dimensions of the bottle. As we come along here, the bottle passes from a pre-treatment into treatment one. That treatment passes from treatment one to treatment two. Treatment two will eventually then rinse the package with sterile water. What's really cool about the technology that we've developed here is the chemical sterilant that's coming over is coming over in a water-based sterilant. That sterilant, when passed through the right frequency of UV, will take the hydrogen peroxide sterilization-like capability out of the water and convert it back into sterile water. So even the sterile water generation comes off our sterilization skid. That water can be used to final rinse the package that water can be 100% recovered, reprocessed into a sterilant, and reused again. In the past, on a fog system or on competitive systems that were water-based, whether they're parasitic acid-based or similar, the final rinse consumes a tremendous amount of water, typically around 10 to 15 gallons a minute. 10 gallons a minute is about 600 gallons an hour. 6,000 gallons a shift, 18,000 gallons a day for the rest of your life. It's a big deal. This, in theory, consumes absolutely zero. 100% of the sterilization product 
is recovered, reused, and when it goes into CIP, it uses that same system, just turns the decontamination of the water back into sterile water off, sterilizes it with the sterilant, and then the system turns back on. Out of the sterilization chamber into the filling chamber, there's the same concern with pressurization and keeping the fumes contained. So this is an overpressure like on the infeed, except within the sterile environment. There are several patent pending concepts that are into the U.S. Patent Office on how to create this sterilant, how to manage the sterilant, and application uses that are within our specific industry. The end of this manifold you see here is actually extracting any leftover gas from the bottle, replacing it with sterile air, so that as the bottle is filled, there's not the potential for even aggressive gas left in the package to be put into the headspace of the filler. When you get into the filler, you're in a souped up ESL filler or ultra clean filler that Fog has been building for uh, the last five to 10 years, just continuously improved and improved and improved. Um, it goes on to a Fog articulated jaw pick and place capper. This particular one has two cap shoots for fast changeover to go between a 38 millimeter and a 38 63 millimeter over cap. So as you're seeing here, you can see the pre-treatment going into the packages on the infeed star. And then you can see as the bottle is inverted, the treatment going into the interior of the bottle. This rinser has been turned 90 degrees. The reason it's been turned 90 degrees is it extends the contact time of this chemistry with the package without making the footprint of our machine any bigger. Let's come around here. This area here, the bottles are being transferred. And this extended transfer just creates contact time. It, it increases the effectivity of our chemistry. The packaging comes here. It gets rinsed out with sterile water. The rest of the turret is a drip time to meet customers' residual demands. And like I said, any residual left in the bottle, like a gram or two, will be sterile water. and they'll come over to the reliable fog filler and get filled and capped and sent on to a happy customer. At the back of the machine here, you're gonna look and see some of the infrastructure. We're getting ready for an FAT and we're in the factory, so it's not exactly as installed. It's a little bit temporary piped and plumbed, but you'll start to see it. Comparative to other aseptic or near aseptic technologies, this is surprisingly simple. It's complex compared to a standard filler by a long ways, but compared to German aseptic technology, you're going to find it easy to work on and much simpler. Let's get into a little bit of the economics. The sterilization chamber in this machine in a typical plant may consume in the order of $75,000 a month of chemistry. If you make your own or you've got a better purchasing agent, it may be on the $50,000 side if you're on the premium side, it may be on the $100,000 side. Big picture, this is somewhere between $600,000 and a million dollars a year in chemistry you would typically buy for a line like this to meet the sterility that we're gonna achieve. In this particular case, the chemistry you need to buy is zero. You're gonna take regular plant water, we're gonna use it over and over and over, and the plant water we consume on a regular basis won't even turn the meter. The water here on the sterilization side, I was talking before, that it's in the order of 18,000 gallons a day. If this line ran continuously 24 hours a day, seven days a week, it would typically consume 3.6 million gallons of water on the sterile water rinsing. Now, nobody runs a perfect 100%, so just take that number down by a million gallons, 2.5 million gallons a year. This machine will save 2.5 million gallons of water that will go down the waste stream in your plant every year. And that water that goes down is typically polluted with parasitic acid, hydrogen peroxide, 
or whatever other chemistry you may be used to sterilize your container. In our case, that water comes polluted with the sterilant that we created that we desire. We get to reprocess that water, turn it back into a sterilant and reuse it. There's no waste water that ever really needs to go down the drain except for when you clean the system. I believe this technology to be the future of nearly every extended shelf life and aseptic packaging on the planet.